From here starts the speaking test. This is the speaking test of the International English Language Testing System taking place in Ross Isles Academy. The candidate is Nestor Virgilio Gomez Perez, candidate number 0143258. The examiner is Mehnush Hafi, examiner number 443533. Good afternoon, my name is Mehnush Hafi. Would you please tell me your full name? Good afternoon, my name is Nestor Virgilio Gomez Perez. What can I call you? Nestor. Sure. Can I see your identification, please? Yes, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. We can now get started with the first part of the exam. In the first part, I will ask you some personal questions. First, let's talk about your daily routine. When do you wake up? I wake up like at 8 a.m. every day, but it depends because in weekends, I wake up um, after 9 or 10 a.m. And do you think it's important to have a daily routine? Yes, I try now to make habits, but it's difficult. Um, and that's it. Do you ever change your routine? Um, no. Why not? Because I think it's difficult, but now, yes, I changed my routine because I quit my job and my routine changed. Now let's talk about television. Do you like watching TV? Yes. Actually, I don't see too much TV because I studying and I don't have too many time to see. But I like see the series in Netflix. And the last series I see was um, Lost. What's your favorite TV program? My favorite TV program is Lost because it's the last series I see and I think it has too many things to think and... And how much time do you spend watching TV? Mm, maybe a day, one hour or two hours. Now let's move on to talk about handwriting. Do you think handwriting will be replaced by computers? I think the handwriting it's important to make like the brain work. And also in the computers because we are in the technology is it still necessary to keep handwriting? Yes, because I think when the children are growing, it's the first steps to learn the language and also to make like synapses, cerebral synapses in their brain. What impression does a person's handwriting have on other people? Um, I think the people is losing the important of importance of handwriting because in this time we have a lot of cell phones and computers and also because I don't know I think the Parents don't pay attention to the children's. Now let's move on to the second part of the exam. In the second part, I will give you a card with a topic. And you will have to talk about this topic for two minutes. But before you do so, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say. And you can make some notes to help you if you wish. Do you understand? Yes. 
Now I'm giving you the cue card, the paper, and the pen for you to make notes. You should describe a live sports match that you have watched. So here you go. And now you have one minute to think about this topic and I will let you know once your one minute is over. So you can start thinking now. Now your one minute is over and you may talk about this topic for two minutes but do not worry if I stop you. So you can start talking now. Uh, to be honest I don't see a sport um, but if I need to explain one game I remember when the Copa America is playing with uh, Brazil and Argentin Argentina. Um, I remember an internet uh, had a very impression of the game and also I have friends for Argentina and uh, they explained me that in Argentina I have like a good um, passion of football and that makes me want to see the the play and I just watch the play in, in, in internet and I remember it was funny because one guy showed me their camera and with their family in Argentina and I see all the people screaming and saying bad words when some uh, player do a mistake or something. And also I feel like bad because Argentina don't won, won Brazil. And <laughs> I see all the all the family for my friend like sad too and um, was experience. Thank you very much. Can you please hand me back the papers and the pen? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. We can now move on to the third part of the exam. So, in the second part, you described a live sport match that you have watched. Now, in this part, I want to ask you some questions related to this topic. Do you think children should be involved in sports competitions? Yeah, in sport competitions, because it's especially good for the physical improvement and I don't think it's important to see TV or TV sports because I don't know it's different see the game or play the game and do you think it's beneficial to give children who work hard in a school prizes sorry I can repeat my question is it beneficial to give children who work hard in a school prizes? Um, yes, I think it's good, but it depends on the children. They can sometimes come uh, like 
feel like strong, more strong than they than they are. And maybe what do you mean by strong? I mean like mm, when when the children have like too much energy and that energy can uh, use in bad things mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. okay and what kinds of uh, sports competitions do people watch in your country in my country Mexico it's football all the people like football I think is um, the most see sports here and why do you think people watch football more than the other sports in uh, country? not sure it's too many it, too many time see seen that sport like 50 years ago but I think actually we see also baseball because Mexicans are improving last years in the baseball. And do people normally prefer to watch live sports or watch them on TV? I think live sports. Why? Because it's in the moment and it's like the emotions to um, be the first and see the Play and, and are there any disadvantages to watching the sports, watching the live sports? Can you repeat the question, please? Are there any disadvantages to watching live sports? I don't think so. Um, I think it's better because improve the economy, because the people go to the clubs and waste their money. Thank you very much. This is the end of the speaking test. Speaking course. This course is made up of five offline speaking videos in which you will learn all the necessary tips and techniques to take the IELTS speaking test with a high score. Tell me about your family. Do you like In addition to that, you will have access to useful grammar and vocabulary resources. Once you finish your course, you will have one online mock test of speaking along with comprehensive feedback under the same exam conditions. Interesting question. A very... Join us to become our next successful candidate. Okay, Nestor, let's see what you did. First, uh, I will give you some details about each criteria and then we can talk about your overall band score, okay? Okay. Good. So, to start with your fluency and coherence as the first criteria, um, I can first mention your problems here, the things that you can work on. Um, First of all, I do recommend you to reduce your hesitations because sometimes you are speaking so slowly, pausing for a long time to think of what you actually want to say. So maybe in the beginning of your answer, you can use more fillers and boosters only to buy yourself some time, analyze what you want to say, and then you can start talking. You used a few fillers, like for example, as I remember, like boosters and fillers. Uh, but maybe you can use more of that just to reduce your hesitations. Other than that, you had some uh, self repetition, like you had you you said something and then you repeated the same idea, and this can lead to not ha not having a range of vocabulary in your speaking. So instead, maybe you can use some other words, some other structures to talk about newer ideas, not to repeat yourself. And uh, if you want to get a high, higher score in fluency and coherence, try to use more connectives and discourse markers. Because if you only use and, so, but, because, then that wouldn't be enough. Uh, you use the word also as well, or actually, I think, discourse markers, but 
The thing is that maybe you could use more of them. For example, however, besides, in addition, on one hand, on the other hand, uh, throughout the test, part one, part two, and part three, when, wherever you think it's the correct place to use it. Um, the last thing I should mention regarding your fluency and coherence is that make sure to cover your ideas and give the relevant answer to the question. For example, in the first part where I was asking you about the handwriting, the first question and the third question, uh, your answer was not re really related. Like, for example, the, in the third one, I asked you about the impression that you can make on other people uh, with your handwriting. And you, you gave me an answer, but it had nothing to do with the question itself. So listen carefully to the question. If you don't understand the question, then you can ask the examiner to repeat the question. No problem with that. And uh, then make sure you're giving the relevant answer to that. So that's all about your fluency and coherence. Um, now to talk about your lexical resource, your vocabulary. In your vocabulary, I can say the good thing was that you were able to talk about uh, all these familiar or unfamiliar topics to you. Maybe some of them were a bit harder for you to understand or just uh, elaborate on. Some of them were easier. But anyways, you kept talking, especially in the second part. You just kept talking for the two minutes and you talked about all the bullet points here. And that's a very good thing. However, I uh, do recommend you to use a wider range of vocabulary. For example, in the first part, you use the collocations making habits, making a habit. That was a really good one. And I, ex I really expected to hear more of these words, some more collocations, like the combination of words together, which give you a new meaning. For example, I don't know about eating, you can say uh, to eat in moderation. That's a good collocation about eating. So if you can use more vo vocabulary, more collocations or even idioms, then you can really boost your score in this part. Um, you used, as I mentioned before, you used a few fillers and boosters, but maybe you could use more just to buy yourself some time. And don't forget paraphrasing. Paraphrase the examiner's question. Don't repeat the exact same words. Try to use some synonyms to paraphrase the question. For example, I say, um, um, do you like watching TV? You can say, I'm a big fan of watching television. Mm -hmm. So this is all about paraphrasing, using the direct synonyms to paraphrase the question or to paraphrase your own sentences. Now to talk about your grammatical range and accuracy. Um, I can say that you can boost your score in this one really easily if you get some practice because you are familiar with many structures, with different tenses, but the thing is that you make several mistakes, frequent mistakes while you're using them. Um, and your mistakes were, your mistakes just increased as you were going on with the different parts. Like in part one, you had less grammatical mistakes, but in part two and especially part three, almost in all your sentences, you were making mistakes. And maybe it was because you got a bit nervous and your mind went blank because these things happen. So um, first of all, try to be more careful with the mistakes you make. For example, you said too many times, which is too much time. It was mostly singular, plural, and tenses. Uh, it have, it has, the people is losing, uh, which was people are losing, that was actually a pronunciation problem. See a sports, to watch a sports, to watch TV, you said, uh, again, see TV, do a mistake, no, make a mistake, it depends of, it depends on, or I used to watch, I used to watch, you want to talk about your past habit, used to watch. And um, don't forget the subject. Maybe in your mother tongue or some other languages you speak, you, you are, it is okay not to use the subject and just use the verb right there. But in English, you, don't, you shouldn't forget that. You shouldn't miss the subject, okay? And so this is all about your grammar. And um, be careful with the tenses, especially in the second part. Because maybe the first bullet point is in present, but the next one is in past. So you were not using the tenses correctly, especially in the second part. 
finally, your pronunciation. Um, in your pronunciation, it was it was clear to understand what you were saying, but you were not using the pronunciation features really well. I mean, you had several mispronunciations, or more importantly, your intonation was not really good in this in the three parts. It was a bit flat while you were talking to me. So maybe you can just raise and lower your voice um, in a way that is more like, you know, English intonation. And uh, about your mispronunciations, for example, instead of I quit my job, you said I quit my job. Or study, which is study. And uh, club, which is club. Specially, you said specially. Physical, again, physical. So the sound Z that you pronounce it se and j usually that you said usually and some spanish pronunciations i could hear like how, mm, it was not pure english so make sure to use the english word with the english pronunciation okay okay so this is all about the four criteria now what do you think of your performance were the topics easy for you to talk about or it was unfamiliar I think it's easy, but I feel nervous and I mm -hmm. want to improve my English now. Great, yeah, you can, you can work on your English because if you improve your grammar and your vocabulary range, you will absolutely do better the next time.